Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Amazon Pro Herbicide and Pride Seeds. I'm Calvin Hefner with Real Agriculture and uh, joined in the field today by Jeanette Goche, Technical Service Specialist with BASF. And Jeanette, we're standing in a, a cornfield. The corn is up, but so are uh, are the weeds. How are things looking when it comes to the growing season and what we've learned so far in, uh, in 2021 here in Western Canada with corn? Well, I love corn. I love taking weed, weed questions in corn, but uh, for sure this year, uh, weed control has been a little bit of a challenge uh, in the West for this particular crop and lots of other crops. Um, but I guess for corn in particular, it really does, corn's a diva, likes to be clean. So we like to start off clean. Um, we can really lose yield quickly just by having a weedy field. Um, and then it likes to stay clean and we like to hit the weeds when they're small. So if we could go back in time, um, unfortunately it was really dry here. So the weeds weren't up and um, just didn't make a sense for a lot of growers to go out and do the pre-emerge spray. Um, but like I say, if we could go back in time, I would still recommend that in corn. A lot of the soil applied products uh, do have that residual. And while it might not kick in until there is a rain, it will just stay in the soil. And once we do get that rain, we'll get a flush of weeds and that product is going to kick in as well. And that's sort of what we're seeing in terms of that flush of weeds, that kochia and lamb's quarter showing up right now. So, yep, that's a good segue. So obviously the corn is up. Um, you know, we, we can't go back in time. So if you didn't get your pre-emerge on, don't worry. There's lots of in-crop options. Um, and I think it depends a lot on your weed spectrum. So what we're seeing under these hot, dry conditions is that um, kochia with that last shot of rain, rain we're really getting a, a flush of kochia. We're seeing lambs quarters, some hardier weeds like that, um, and definitely some volunteer cereals and the grassy weeds starting as well. So we want to make sure that we are looking at what is coming up in the field and then choosing the right in-crop product to address that spectrum. So I think when it comes to Roundup Ready corn, we're looking for that tank mix partner um, volunteer canola can be another big one so maybe a group 27 in that case um, even getting a group 27 on to get some additional activity on lambs quarters or, or pigweeds for example and then there is the perk that you do get some suppression on foxtail and barnyard grass um, another a good mode of action in corn would definitely be some of those group four chemistries particularly dicamba we kind of shy away from some of the phenoxies um, just because of the risk of uh, plant response. Um, so we do have to make sure that we are avoiding some of those applications though when temperatures are going up and down, but a really strong chemistry to address some of those weeds like kochia and lamb's quarters. And that dicamba uh, application, that would be an example that we're standing in right here. This is kochia that's come up and come on pretty strong. D the grower in went in with dicamba. Yep, so this one is an application of Ingenia. And again, the grower was back and forth with his rep. Uh, we had cool conditions last week, and now we're into some really warm conditions. So just trying to find uh, maybe that's that sweet spot when you can get the product applied. I um, guess that's another perk of having a pre-emerge is it sometimes gives you a little bit of leeway when you're making your in-crop just because your weed flushes might not be coming on as strong. Um, but again, making sure that we are making good decisions about application timing in corn. Okay, well, why don't we expand on that, on timing, on that aspect and how growers go about timing their herbicide applications in corn? So that is a big question we get here. So herbicide labels for corn seem to be uh, maybe a little bit vague when it comes to when to apply. So uh, sometimes we indicate corn height, sometimes we talk about leaves, but there's many ways to stage corn. Um, so agronomists often use the, the V or the collar staging, and that's not something that you really see on a herbicide label. So you usually see the number of leaves indicated, and so that would either be the leaf over method or the leaf tip method. And so for BSF products in particular, we always use the leaf over method. Why don't we take a look at some of the plants in front of you? All right, so here we have our corn plant. 
And as mentioned, we're going to use the leaf over method here. So we do count our first coleoptile leaf here. And then we're counting our leaves that are bent over. So we're at one, two, three, four. This differs than the leaf tip method where we would also count this leaf as the fifth leaf. So we have a couple of other plants here. So it has been dry. It has been windy. We had to touch a frost. So what you can see here is that some of these plants, um, the leaves that were up when the frost and the wind were going through, the leaves have been injured. In this case, these are probably gonna fall off and it's not uncommon for this first leaf to come off. But when making decisions on herbicide timing for your in-crop, you wanna make sure that you are counting the leaves that have fallen off or are about to fall off. So it still counts towards the physiological age of that corn plant and can affect tolerance when making those herbicide applications. Um, so here we would still count one, two, three, four. So to summarize, there's still lots of opportunity to tackle the weeds in your corn crop. Um, so we definitely want to make sure that you are uh, targeting your corn at the right stage, making sure that you have the product that will address those, uh, those particular weeds that you have in your field. And then look at the crop safety as well. Um, you know, we did talk about stage because there are some products that can be safe, safely applied, you know, twice in one season or up to seven leaf stage. So really giving you an opportunity to add something in with that glyphosate, especially if you're going on second pass as well. Um, so kind of unique to Western Canada is we do have slightly different corn products than what you'd hear in Ontario or even south of the border. But this is really fantastic news for us because these products really fit our rotation. And so when you check the product label, you'll see that there's really um, very few recrop restrictions with the corn herbicides we have here. All right. Thanks again for your time and your insight, Jeanette. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>